So I've been thinking a lot recently about improvements and specifically this, I think, fact that improvement has to happen one step at a time. This is something I think I've known on some level for a little while, but it's really kind of come to the forefront of my attention recently, just given a few uh, different paintings that I've done and a few different experiences that I've had. And this idea really is that I think your mind tends to see the things that you want it to see, which isn't some sort of revelation that I'm having. This is well known to actually be the case. We have things that we aim for and our mind sees the things that are relevant towards that aim and tends to filter out many things which aren't, which is actually quite practical. So I suppose in that sense, there are two elements to this. I, it's, it's difficult cognitively to focus on improving multiple aspects of your art within a single drawing, but it's also difficult to even observe from a reference multiple different fields of study, you know, to learn something about shading and about anatomy and about shape and about color. You might be able to, but they'll all be a little shallow, or most will be, and then one will be a little more useful. One observation will really stand out. And this is really frustrating as a new artist, obviously, because you want to draw good. I want to draw good. I want to draw good stuff. And so you sit down to make a drawing, and you're like, okay, I'm going to improve all these things. I'm going to make all these things look good. And the reality is you're going to maybe make one thing look slightly better, maybe. But that's that's okay. That's why practice makes perfect, right? You gotta get in your repetition, go through the motions, and you'll get there eventually. It used to be very aggravating, though, for sure. There was this artist I really liked. I still like his stuff. I really liked it back in the day, though. Uh, Wing Lang, I think is his name. W L O P W L O P. I don't know. Regardless, I'm sure everyone here is familiar with his work. Going back to it, looking on it now, I'm not sure it's my favorite anymore, but it is still it is still good. It's a far more advanced painter than me, for sure. So nothing much I can say there. I think the subject matter is oftentimes a little bit limiting. I look at his paintings and they all sort of blend together, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. We all have our styles and our subject matter that we enjoy that we tend to favor more than others. But I used to really like this guy's work and I would try and emulate his painting style and I would get very, very discouraged as one might imagine. Now, the issue here wasn't actually necessarily the painting. The thing to keep in mind is the painting looks so cool and it's so interesting, but you can't miss out on the fact that he's really good at drawing. His shape design is really strong. He knows his anatomy. He knows his composition. And without these, it doesn't really matter how you paint. So if you sit down as an amateur artist and you try and emulate this, you're going to find yourself to be very discouraged because not only will your painting not look like his painting, but your drawings will also look like shit relative to his. And so that can just be kind of a bad approach, kind of a discouraging approach, right? You've got to narrow your vision. It's actually it's actually practical to do that. I guess this leaves us with the question of what do we narrow our vision on? And that's a really tough question because the answer is in fact different for everybody. You know, it all depends on what your current skill set is, what you need to improve on. But the good news is I think if we choose the right things and we make the right improvements, we'll start to improve naturally in other ways that we wouldn't necessarily expect. And we'll actually make a lot of very quick progress that way. For me, what I would say is, you know, try and become as comfortable as possible drawing, especially drawing fundamentals, which I know that everybody already says, but it's also true that it's a little hard to hear that. But I think that really is the key. And as soon as we can get as familiar as possible with anatomy and with form and with perspective, we'll start to just naturally pick up on elements of painting and, you know, more subtle elements of anatomy as we draw from reference. Once the drawing becomes second nature, the whole process just becomes a lot uh, simpler. So for instance, recently, I have been drawing a lot with students. I teach art lessons, and I found myself improving a lot actually drawing with them, right? We draw from references, and drawing from references was not something that I did often enough before, but I've been doing it so many times recently, and what I'm finding is that I'm learning so much more from the references that I than I ever used to learn. So to pick one example, faces, right? Drawing faces from three quarters and from the front. I'm, I'm pretty familiar with profile view too, obviously. It's not one that I draw often, but it is one that I'm, you know, familiar with. But drawing faces, especially from those other two angles, is something that I've done so many times over the years. It's basically second nature to me at this point. And so I don't have to put too much thought into the basics of drawing that angle. That's not to say that I don't still have a lot to learn or a lot that I can improve on. But even versus a year ago, it's something that I, I just don't have to think quite as much about, which frees up space in my brain, space 
space and my cognition to worry about other things or to worry about finer details once the proportions and forms are far more second nature. And so there are certain details that sometimes you just never notice, right? So I used to draw the arms overlapping the lats. That was something that just was so common sense to me, right? Okay, so you have a back muscle, it's on the back, you flex, your lats flare, they're gonna be behind your arm. And I remembered it was maybe a year or two ago that I figured out that that actually was the opposite. Your lats go in in front of your triceps. So if you have very defined lats, your arm is actually going to appear to be on the bottom overlapped by your lat. It doesn't just appear to be that way, that's actually what happens. And I just never noticed that before. I was always worried about other things. But even more amazingly, when it comes to faces, I never noticed the volumetric change that occurs under your eyebrows, where part of your brow is convex and part is concave. This wasn't a sudden discovery, per say it was maybe over the course of a month or so doing drawings from references shading them that I just I just sort of started to realize when I took a more objective view of shadow shadow didn't behave under the eyebrow the way I expected it to and it, it's really interesting how we can blind ourselves and maybe another another relevant thing to note here is actually learned versus observed so I had learned a formula for shading the face that didn't match with with reality and this formula was so useful when I wasn't familiar with the face as a way to get a good enough result that it was only when my result was good enough that I was sort of freed up to observe what was actually going on. And so over the course of maybe the last month, my facial shading has improved drastically. Uh, much thanks to Cynics for that one. His um, painting, uh, it was, was it his like intro to painting video where he talks about, talks about emphasizing the shapes of shadows and shape economy. All that's a very, very great stuff. And it's it's basically what led me to realizing that the face worked this way, which is useful not only for painting, but any sort of drawing you need to do or you might need to shade. I, I just never realized the brow worked that way. It wasn't until I took this more objective view of the shapes of shadows that I realized this, and it wasn't until I was familiar enough with the face that I had the extra brain capacity to worry about such things. There was even much of an opportunity for me to learn that, I suppose. So yeah, try not to stress too much about improvement. I would say really just have one or two things that you're focusing on at any given time and when you pick that one or two things be really thorough with them obviously always be improving your fundamentals first and foremost but you know pick something and be specific so don't just say anatomy say forearms and then go and totally familiarize yourself with the forearms and you'll have to do it again later because as you improve in the fundamentals again it's one of these things you're always limited by your knowledge of the fundamentals so if you start as a beginner and you try and learn the forearms you will not learn them as well as you would being a more advanced artist so you will have to go back here and there but be specific with what you study be thorough don't worry too much about improving everything at once and draw a lot it's all about mileage as much as i myself do not like that fact oh well